feel like I'm home, so I want to. I think that somewhere in the house is my successor, <laughs> the Reverend Dr. Barbara Headley, the, the, the pastor elect of the Zion Community Church. Stand up, Barbara. We want to. Amen. God bless you. I just thought it appropriate, proper, for, to acknowledge your presence here. Yeah. I, I praise God who is the author and finisher of creation. Hmm. Uh, the protocol being established, my, my task is to say a few words to the members of the congregation that in the last 44 years I have come to know so well. I have done your weddings and funerals when you did not have a passion. All right. Sat with your deacons in their planning sessions and your pulpit committees in their work you have honored me with the non-Baptist title overseer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told somebody in Maryland that I'm the only retired overseer who is a Baptist in the state of Maryland. <laughs> so I come, my brothers and my sisters, to tell you that there can only be one pastor. There can only be one pastor. You want me to tell you the truth? Hmm. Our relationship demands that I tell you the truth. My little sister Paula hmm. is your pastor. I challenge you I challenge you, my sisters and brothers, to work with her and not around her. That's right. To talk to her and not about her. In some closed coffee class. I know you know how that works. You have your own coffee classes. Hmm. Your task is to pray with her and to pray for her That's right. as she follows Christ. Yes. Jesus tells us in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Pardon me for being full of this. This is a good day for yes. I'm glad about it. Hmm. Today in Bethlehem, we come to an extension of what the Master has built over the last 2,000 years. Hmm. And so my charge today is to encourage you to stand on the rock. Since Bethlehem is etymologically known as the house of bread, I want to charge you in the midst of all current geopolitical shifts and spiritual battles to do the following. I want to challenge you to resolve to be bread to the hungry. I want to challenge you to resolve to be nourishment to the neglected and the needed. I want to challenge you to be spiritual calcium to the counted out. I want to challenge you to get theological meat to the marginalized. I want to challenge you to walk by the power of God so that other folk will want to walk with you. Go ahead. But lest we forget it, it is in the name of Jesus that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. May God bless you and may he keep you.
Greater Springfield, and we are happy, happy, happy to be celebrating with you on this great historic day. Won't you share a, a hearty praise the Lord for what God has done? Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. the stars in space, we realize, oh God, that you have already ordained, appointed, anointed, placed, and installed your servant leader. You have already, God, unified pastor and people in this your house of prayer. So God, we say thank you. Thank you. Oh, we love you, God. Yes. You've done perfect. You're awesome. Yes, There's nothing too hard for you, God. Yes, yes. We lift up holy hands, oh God, in the sanctuary. We are grateful, Father God, for what you've done. Yes. Now, God, we are just coming into compliance with what you have done ex now. So now, God, we ask that you would consecrate pastor and people to your service now by the power of grace divine. Their souls are looking up with steadfast hope. And, oh, God, their will is lost in that. Draw us nearer to your precious bleeding sight. God, we ask for purpose in this season where the ecclesia finds itself. We ask, oh God, for strong leadership and strong fellowship, not just in the four walls of this edifice, but a church that is moving and viable and transient 
and a ministry, O oh God, that carries us from the mountain even into the valley experience. Father, we thank you for this pastor and for these people. God, we ask that you would touch this pastor from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Late in the midnight hour, God, give her a song, God. Give her a hymn, God. Hallelujah. For you inhabit the praises of your people and we're reminded, oh God, when they were locked up and Roman cell, it was midnight that they lifted up a praise. You came in to that small cell. And the Bible lets us know that all their bands were loose and the folk became free. Help us to remember, oh God, even in the fourth watch of the night, oh Lord God, let fear be not under your pastor, but over your pastor. As she looks up and reverence you, we thank you, God, thank you. for reverence. As she's able to walk on the water, as hmm. she keeps her eyes on you, her Savior. God, we ask that not just the pastor yeah. would see Jesus, but that the people too would see Jesus. For if it had not been for the Lord, which was on their side, we bless your Father for what you've already done in the Bethlehem Baptist community and what you are doing right now and what you will do through the covenant union a pastor and people. Keep her God. Yes. Keep her Father. Yes. Cover her now. Oh, build a hedge of protection around her, oh God. The weapon will be formed, God, but we know that it won't prosper. We thank you, God, that she's blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when she comes, blessed when she goes. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping her all these years, for preparing her, Father, for this ministry. Open her mind and her heart to never stop studying to show herself approved unto you. Workmen, not ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, we ask for a fresh anointing in this house that the wind of Pentecost blow freely in this house. Thank you, God, for calling her, choosing her, anointing her, and appointing her to this defining hour. Father, we ask for a community that will also serve as Joshua's, holding up our arms. 